Good morning. Let's work on the 10 piece set a little bit. I've got them all roughed out. The blades are roughed. We're going to get them to the final shape, grind the bevels, do the heat treating, and I will uh, tell y'all how I do this. Different than some other people do it, but uh, this has worked for me for 16 almost 17 years now so let's get to work now these are the steak knives for the 10 piece set rough ground on the 2x42 we'll take the 1x30 and we're going to finish off the curves because we have a small diameter wheel here and let's go ahead and get that done There's the radius ground on those. Now that's all for this sander. When I get the other ones done, then we'll move over to the 4 by 36 and finish them off. Okay, I've got the radiuses ground. Radiuses, is that a word? The radius ground. <laughs> On all of them now we're going to refine the shape here and here from the rough you can see where it was rough ground i'm going to use the 4 by 36 with a ceramic belt and it should go fairly quickly where are these don't forget your safety glass Heavy grinding. I will put on my respirator, but uh, this is not taking off much material at all, so it's not going to throw a whole lot of dust.
вот. Now the water bucket is so keep it cool. It does have to be heat treated in the end, but uh keep it cool so you can handle it. You can know, touch it and grab it and all that. There we go. This is ready for bevel grind, which will be the next step. And get the rest of these done and we'll get to that step. All right, there they are. They're uh, ground down to the almost finished profiles. Now this 10-piece set actually is going to be an 11-piece set. A little bit different than the rest of them. This one has a cleaver. Chef knife. Butcher knife. Now the butcher knife is a little bit thicker steel. This is eighth inch. The rest of them are three thirty second. Because a butcher knife has to be very tough for uh, exactly that butchering. Paring knife. One, two, three, four, five, six. See there, I can count that high. Steak knives. And there will be a bread knife to go along with it. You just cut loaves of bread. I'll do that one last because that will take a, a little bit longer than these, believe it or not. And because uh, that will be reclaimed steel. And it'll take a, all these are going to be high polished. It's going to take a little while to high polish that. So um, all these are 1095 high carbon steel. 332nd except for the butcher knife, which is 8th inch which is your standard uh, hunting and bushcrafting type knife thickness what most people use but a uh, 332nd is more than plenty for kitchen knives it's fine for hunting knives and all that kind of stuff too but uh, that's my opinion now I said Bevel grind is next. Actually, what I want to do next is drill the holes for the pinholes for the handles. And we'll get the... Let's see, I think... Let's use the milling machine to do that. We already got a bit set up in there and everything, so... Let's do that next. Alright. We're all set up to drill our holes. I got a set of parallels in here keep it off of the in the vise here get it tight just eyeball it down in there Nothing is exact, nothing is precision, but they are all very similar. A little bit of oil on there. To me, that is. I see how I want to put it. Uh, truly handmade. If everything is exact, precision, everything looks exactly the same. That's a machine made part, and that's not what I do. So, uh, 
Okay, we'll get the mill running. Crank it down here and line up the other hole. Now these holes are all just eyeballs and marks. I don't measure. I just go by what looks right. Right there. like that now if I didn't mention these are eighth inch holes I think eighth inch is the perfect pin size now I'm not gonna go back with a reamer I'm not gonna countersink there's a burr on the back side I'll knock that off with the grinder before it's time for handles so that's that one down, a bunch to go, so. <laughs> be back to the next step in a little bit, which will be grinding the bevels. Alrighty, all the holes are drilled. I was thinking about some. If I had a dollar for every hole I've drilled in a knife handle, over all these years I could buy me a new fishing pole <laughs> all right let's get set up and grind the bevels well good morning let's get back on our uh, bevel grinds for the 10 piece set show you one of them the way I do it Got the knife clamped in the jig. I am a jig grinder. I can't freehand anymore uh, due to my arthritis and all that kind of stuff, but a uh, jig works just fine. I'm going to start out with a 80 grit belt, the same one that we do the rough grinding with, and we'll move to a different grit here in just a minute. Make our first passes here. Make a few passes with the 80 grit. Now that leaves a really much of rough scratches on there. So to avoid a lot of hand sanding, set that to the side. Now this takes a little time doing it. If I had two of these, it would be better, but uh, I don't. So take the 80 grit off this is a 220 belt that is pretty much wore out get it tracking correctly now, 
without changing anything. Just a couple of passes will take out the heavy scratches and leave a much, much smoother finish. Then, let's see, let's move the camera over here. Hang on. Take the knife out of the jig. Turn it the opposite way. Trying to get this where y'all can see it. But, uh, sit back on the jig. I hold it down with a vice grip. Like that. We'll do the same exact thing on this side. Hang on. Move it again. Take that belt off, put the 80 grit back on. Always let it stop. Don't try to stop it with your hand. Ask me how I know that. Don't do that. There we go. So on and so forth. All the rest of them be the same. Where are these? Save your eyeballs. Okay, we've got all the bevels ground on the other knives. Now this set uh, requires a cleaver. Small cleaver. Now switch to a different jig. Now this is my old grinding jig, but I have set it up to specifically for cleavers, large profile type blades. And uh, we'll do it the same way, just a different jig. I'll show you a couple of passes on that right quick.
There we go. Same process. Different jig. Good morning. Well, here they are, ready for a blade etch. Got my little templates on here. And I've shown this several times in the past, but uh, let's look at it again in case you didn't see it. We're set up right here. And a piece of wood is not necessary, really. I just like to keep it up off of the thing a little bit. Okay, we're going to put our hot wire there. Our etching machine. High-tech solution. You can buy a mild acid to do this. And it works very well. I've used it before. But that is way more cheaper. A couple of tablespoons of salt water and you're done fresh pad on there get that wet turn on our machine I know you can't hear it hear it sizzling or feel it sizzling a little bit wetter there we go there is some debate among some makers some people don't mark their work most of us do I was taught if you're proud of what you do you'll put your name on it which is exactly what I do but that's just me take too long just a few seconds turn it off paper towel one day I'm gonna have everything laid out that I need in a <laughs> Okay, now it's hot right now. Let it cool off, then we'll peel all this off. In the meantime, I'll do all of these the same way. Set the paring knife. It'll have the old school bark on it. Because I don't have any of these templates small enough for these. I have some ordered. She'll get two in one day, I guess. Okay, got all of them etched. Clean them off, take all the tape off, and the tape is on there because wherever that salt solution runs and gets electricity to it, it'll make etching marks in there. And it does leak a little from time to time, but by the time it gets uh, heat treated, cleaned, and buffed real good, it normally comes out. It's easier to take it off. Try to keep it out to start with. The razor blade. Take our little template off of there. Like that. And always leaves the stick, sticky stuff on there. Take some acetone. the sticky off of there then before it's heat treated I take each one of them to the wire wheel and clean out the inside of the etching and then be ready for heat treat four more to go all right out here at the forge with the mosquitoes show you how I heat treat we we'll just do one Is, I see a lot of people 
even on the fourth of fire so they get it too hot for a 1095 high carbon steel normal knife that you're not going to chop cans with barrels and all that ridiculous stuff uh, there is a certain temperature if you want to go that route a good dull red is plenty Concentrate on your edge. The floors will go higher. I can crank it up higher, but there's no need because we're not in a particularly big hurry. I'll excuse the mess at the forge area out here. I have not properly taken care of this year. I do have a call in for some uh, folks that bought some scrap metal for me a few years back. We'll get them out here. We're going to get rid of a bunch of this stuff. Because I cannot heavy forge anymore. And quite frankly, I don't want to anymore. This is a kitchen set. So uh, I'm going to quench these in vegetable oil. Most other regular using knives get quenched in uh, actually hydraulic fluid, like a transmission oil. Here, too, is where if you get it too hot, scale, the burn off scale will get thin. Alright, see there we go, we got a good dull red color on the edge. I see people shake it up and down and all that kind of thing, I don't know why they do that. straightening jig clamp it in there and, uh, let it sit till it cools and it should come out straight bigger knives will do that sometimes the shorter ones not so much so let's go to the shorter ones next and that's how that is done well that, that's how I do it. All, right, all these came out straight now what I do let them cool down all the way sitting out here on the bench then I'll take them up to the sink and we'll scrub off the oil and continue with the tempering. And we'll see if that cleaver turns out straight or not, which it should. All right, blades have cooled down. I've got them over here in the sink. Wash them down with that. I get these little bottles here at one of the 5,252 dollar generals around here because they're only a dollar any kind of dishwashing soap will work but uh that works better with oil well, the cleaver did come out straight so it's all good before they go in the tempering oven you want all the oil off of them. Let's see, this one does have a little bit of carbon burn on it. Right in here, but no big deal. I'll show you how to take care of that in the next steps. I think I'm going to call this video done once I put them in the tempering oven. 
and we will do a part two because I'm about to start working on the block and there's one more knife to be made and I'll make it after the block is a uh, sized and I'll show you the reason and why when I get to that point Just get all that remember this was vegetable oil get all that off there's some more of that carbon burn there don't fear it'll come right off and these are going to be buffed to a high polish the, the whole set so. one more I think if you leave any oil on these when they go in the tempering oven it won't really hurt it, but it'll uh, it'll smoke up the shop and make a mess. Wash out our rag and use that again. And that's that. All right, as a, before I put them in the tempering oven, I want to double check, make sure they're hard. That's the purpose of heat treating, is to harden the steel. Now this file has a lot of bite. And it just skates across there, that is hardened. I'm very confident, whoops, I'm very confident that they're all hardened steel. No issues. Load them up in there. Do the small ones first because I don't think they're all going to fit. And what the tempering does is take a little bit of the hardness out of it so it's not too awful hard too brittle and you can still easily sharpen them when the time comes I can fit this one in there good Never stack them on top of each other either. Okay, one hour, 450. Let's take about 10 minutes to warm up. After about 10 minutes, I'll crank the timer back to an hour. And that way it'll be nice and hot. And we'll check them for hardness again and clean them all up when we're done. And I'll run the other two. Now, that'll be the end of this video for now. I'll start another one because I don't want it to go on forever. But uh, I'm going to get the lumber out, the cypress for the block. And we'll get to cutting on that and get that all set up.